So point number four, once you're on the path to zero waste planning, what are the keys to success? Well, there's three keys, three, three key actions and one key thought. So the three key actions are education, financial consequences, and regulation. I'll talk first about education. By education, what I mean is a culture shift. We're talking about shifting everyone, every person, every institution, every business, away from using the single trash can, which is the uh, tool necessary for the waste system, and start using three trash cans, one for recycling, one for composting, one for residue. That's the key for a zero waste economy. And so that takes, it sounds easy, but that takes a significant culture shift. It also, of course, means an infrastructure shift. You can't have thousands of trash cans all around the island standing alone. Now you need to have recycling bins attached to that trash can so that it's just as easy to do the right thing as it is to do the wasting thing. Um, so culture shift, number one, education needs to be well-funded, needs to be comprehensive. Your, there's an old saying in the recycling industry, your first processing dollar goes into community education. Why is that? Because your community is your cheapest sorting labor. You want people to do it correctly. And so don't underinvest in your community outreach and education. In fact, culture shift may be the hardest part of what we're talking about all day today. It's easy to build facilities. It's easy to write policies. It is tough to get people to change their behavior. Don't underestimate it. Key action number two is financial consequences. That means reward the recyclers. Reward financially. It's a pocketbook issue. Reward the people that participate and come your way with the zero waste economy. That means that the people who don't come your way are going to pay for the pollution that they're contributing to. Because we've already discussed how the waste system versus the zero waste system has a higher cost in pollution. Polluter pays is a well-known and fair principle that the United States EPA and others, the whole world is running off of. So it's important that the financial consequences reward those businesses and individuals that are joining the culture shift and participating in the new zero waste economy. Third key action, regulation. Nobody likes to be told what to do. So the approach we recommend is called rates and dates. Basically what that means is a certain community, maybe it's a industry of a certain type on Guam, needs to start recycling 50% of their discards within three years and then 70% within five years. That's the rates and the dates. And you send them the message that you know that they're in the best position to solve the problem. Industry always can create the most cost-effective approach. And they will if they feel like they have to. So the message to industry and others on the island is meet these rates voluntarily, figure it out yourself, or the community through the government is going to come in with requirements and regulations. So that's the rates and dates approach. It's fair. It gives industry and individuals the freedom to come up with their own solutions, to join in the, participate in the community goals, uh, and move forward. Finally, there's a key thought in all of this. And I think it's important that everyone buy into this and understand this statement. Zero waste community planning is a social change issue first and a free market issue second. And that's turning it on its head because the recycling history in the world has been, the market has been driving what gets recycled rather than community benefit, environmental and social benefit drives what gets recycled and the economics follow. The reason this is important is because you already have an established waste management system on Guam and it's going to be uncomfortable and sometimes difficult for them to change to support the new zero waste community program. But as long as you, they get on board and understand it's a social change issue first, a culture shift and a new way of living on the island first, then the market economics will fall out afterwards, business will still be done, profits will still be made, and as a matter of fact, the total waste management bill on Guam will be lower 
because you'll be capturing the value of the resources. Moving on now to point number five, and that is how to get going. What's the first step? Um, and EcoCycle has created what we call a 10-year bridge strategy to a zero waste community. It's essentially a generic 10-year plan. And we've been able to, to create this because so many communities now have gone down this path and we've learned so much about how to get to 50% recycling rates, 70% recycling rates. We don't know how to get to 90% yet. We, we have seen communities hit 90, small in Italy and small ones in New Zealand. Um, but mostly, uh, we have solid uh, evidence of the programs and the policies and the infrastructure needed to get to 50% and 70%. So I would suggest to you that your first 10-year plan would probably, the target, appropriate target would probably be to get you to a 70% uh, resource recovery rate. So breaking out our 10-year plan, it has three phases. Phase one is year one to four. Phase two is year five to eight and phase three is year nine to 10. Uh, and each has a specific key idea behind it. In your first phase, your first four years, absolutely essential that you build the infrastructure that you need. If you're not gonna be putting things in the landfill, where's it gonna go? Remember, you're always gonna have discards to deal with. Well, it turns out that there are what we call the big six facilities that every zero waste community needs. I won't go through all of those facilities right now, but they include things like recycling, composting, construction and demolition, uh, and landfill is one of them. So the first four years are primarily intended to build infrastructure. Must focus on that because if you don't have the infrastructure, then what is the point of creating policies and programs to get things out of landfill if they have nowhere to go? That's phase one. Phase two, and from year five to eight, and this doesn't have to start in year five, this can be started while phase one is going on. But the key idea behind phase two is building participation. Now it's time for the culture shift to actually have an impact and for everybody on the island to actually start using three trash cans instead of one and start sorting the material, start uh, implementing your, your EPP programs and really get the culture geared in increase participation from year five to eight. And the key idea here, as I said, it's a pocketbook issue, is to create what's called pay-as-you-throw, unit-based pricing. Unit-based pricing is absolutely the most powerful lever a community has to, move, to create behavior change. And that just means the more waste you create, the more you pay. It's as simple as that. The less you create, the less you pay. It's reward the recycler system. So increase participation in phase two. Phase three, year nine and 10. This is where you really link arms with the primary commercial sector in your community. Where I live, the commer commercial sector accounts for 60% of our local waste. I'm not sure what the numbers are in Guam, but 50-50 wouldn't surprise me. Actually, you have a very large military and tourist industry. It's probably more than 50-50 for you. So it's very important to link arms, public-private partnerships, where your large commercial and industri industrial sectors are fully on board with the zero waste community goal at this point. Um, and the way you can support them is by making sure that the green local businesses are winning the profits. And what that means is public dollars are being spent to build the future on Guam that you want. Now it may cost, 10% more. But that's a short-term upfront cost compared to a long-term environmental damage and cleanup cost that you may have. It does, if you take a long-term view at this, you will see that paying, paying a small premium now to create and support green businesses on island will pay off in the long run and especially for your children's future. And finally, we have to ask the question, what about the residue? What should we do with it? Now, the consultants that I'm working with for your day-to-day -day asked me not to get into too much depth here um, because it is a big topic and it's, fairly, and it's often controversial. But you're not the only one that's wrestling with this question, what to do with residue. Um, but no story of a zero waste community would be complete without 
talking about what do you do with that last 10 percent or if your goal is 70 percent what do you do with the last 30 percent congratulations you're at 70 percent recycling rates you still have 30 percent mixed waste so what are we going to do with it and so i'll just briefly say that you basically have two choices and these are two proven market available choices i'm not talking about pie in the sky things that you'll read about in the trade press that everyone's promising that the next groovy black box is going to take care of it i've been watching those for 30 years i'm talking about your two proven options right now in the year 2012 and they're both landfill and landfill but i'll call it landfill plus um, so for your first choice and you have a new landfill is to put a front end on that landfill like Europe's doing and process the material, simply sort it to get out the remaining recyclables. But more importantly than that, then create very inexpensive windrows so that you can turn the material and surface compost it for 30 days, thus stabilizing 90% of the biodegradable waste in the pile. Why is that important? Because we know what's happening in landfills with biodegradable material. They're cooking it up to 180 degrees, creating leachate and air emissions. This will enable you to create an inert, a biologically inert material before you bury it. Uh, the whole nation of Germany is doing this now. It's not expensive and it's effective. So that's option number one. Option number two is landfill, but instead of that front end, your front end is going to be a, what's called a mass burn incinerator. And there's plenty of mass burn incinerators around the country where people are actually making electricity by burning the waste uh, and reducing its volume down to about 10 or 15 percent. That's why you still need a landfill. You, you still end up having material on your hands to landfill, but you're processing it by burning it and making electricity first. Um, may or may not be appropriate for you, but I am going to say there are two, there are two problems in my mind with that approach, and that is number one, the expense. Mass burn incinerators are extremely expensive and getting more so because of air quality um, cleanup emissions equipment. Uh, and the second challenge for those uh, systems are that if you're going to spend a lot of money building it, then you're going to need to have a guaranteed source of fuel, trash, to pay the bank back. So let's say you design your system to burn 30% of the island's waste that's going to be an impediment to you in continuing your zero waste path and getting to 20% and 10% residue. So once you've built that, you're gonna freeze yourself in place for 20, 30 years, um, always burning 30% of the island's waste. Um, so those are the, your options, landfill or landfill. So in summary, the, the question is, can you do this? And the answer is certainly you can do this. Guam can get started on the zero waste path immediately and start making decisions that creates less waste immediately. And as I've told you, it's a process. It's a journey, not a destination. Uh, you've got years and years to work on this, to build your infrastructure, create your policies, and implement your programs. It's a very hopeful activity for the island, for your families, for your businesses. So I want to thank you very much for your time and attention today. Good luck with the brainstorm session. I hope someday to get back out to your wonderful home and work with you on this issue. And I'll close by saying, get started, get sorting.